Well, occasionally, I build some quite quick cars, some quite fast cars, and on occasionally, I build others that are virgin up there on absolute insanity. Is this brushless powered 11,000 kV WL Toys 124019 going to be one of those? Keep watching, see how we got here. Well, welcome to the world's fastest WL Toys 124019 project. I was debating whether to call this Project 120, as my fellow Brit Tom Liarcy has got one called Project 100, where he is aiming to push the 124019 up to 100 miles an hour. However, I've already got my original version of this up to 104 miles an hour. I'll put a link to that video below this one. And this is my second one, and today we're going to be throwing quite a few goodies at it and seeing if we can seriously up the speed game on this second version. Well, will it hit 120? We shall have to see. Or it may, of course, hit something else, like a wall, which would not be good. Anyway, Richie, what have we got going in the car? We're going to have the same Gen Zace 2200 milliamp 3S battery that's powered it up to 104 so far. Phone contact tyres. Oh, we have some metal hexes to fit to the, the car. radio is going to come out of the car. And we're going to fit one of these Dumbo RC six-channel receivers, because this radio has got a 500 metre range, built-in adjustable gyro in it, and it's a bargain at just $30. And that new radio is going in because the stock ESC is a combined ESC and receiver. And it's also got a five wire servo in there. That means I'm going to fit one of these Savox three wire servos. The ESC we've got going in today, Castle Mamba X, which is actually 6S capable. Unlike this motor, which will probably be doing well to handle 3S. This is a surpass hobby, 3.5 turn brushless motor with adjustable timing on it. And that's going to be mounted on one of these separate aluminum motor mounts. I would recommend if you are converting one of these cars to brushless, just heat up the two screws underneath that connect the motor to the car and remove the whole motor and motor mount. Do not even bother trying to remove the stock motor from the car. Just buy one of these new motor mounts so that you can fit your new motor straight in the car. Much, much easier. I'm also going to be fitting some aluminum front steering knuckles to the car. As I found, when the car takes a tumble, they are the thing that tends to break on the car. And lastly, this little wing, I'm going to try and make up a bracket so that we can gain some downforce because I found on the other car, on like the 100 mile an hour runs, it was getting very, very light on the front, even with my droop screw mod. So we're going to fit that wing with maybe some form of adjustability on there. And speaking of that droop screw mod, the cheapest and best mod you can do on this car, get two M3x10 screws, fit them through the droop screw holes at the front, you could, even, you could even fit them at the back if you wanted, and lower the front of the car down, so when we're doing speed runs, the car is gonna be sitting much lower at the front than it is at the rear, so we're getting some aerodynamic effect from that. Might even lower the rear down as well on this one, but I'm gonna keep it nose down. And after say, helping me along the way, I've got these new Power Hobby hex bits to fit in my driver because these things are absolutely excellent. Anyway, I'll put a link to all this stuff below the video. Well, now I've got my three and a half ton motor set up in there. The eagle eyed amongst you will have spotted I've got rid of the Mod 1 gearing that I had fitted in the earlier pictures in there for no other reason than I did not have a suitable matching spur and I really, really want to run this car as soon as possible. Which I, but obviously with COVID, I'm going to wait around for parts at the minute. Now we'll point out, this is a sensor brushless motor, so it will work quite nicely with the Mamba X, hence the ABC leading on the side on there. Timing on the end of the can, but you can adjust the timing on the castle as well. Now I've just got to figure out how to squeeze it all in there. Well, whichever way you look at it, squeezing the ESC is an issue. I can't have it this way, but then I knew that from the start because otherwise the leads are going to be hit from the, and fouling on the bodywork. So I want this end, the cat pack end, ideally sitting down here. If I do that to stop it in the drive shaft, I've got to chew a little bit out of the chassis here. My other solution potentially is to squeeze it in, but oh look, it fouls against the stock servo. However, that stock servo is the next thing that's coming out, and my Savox servo is going in. And if you've seen what I do with these, so I'm fitting them to the car, I use two Ziploc ties to fit them down. So I'm going to do exactly that, see if I can't gain that little bit more room to squeeze the ESC in sideways. Now, just before I remove that servo, this car has got screws on it in the main as opposed to hex head fasteners on there. But I'm using this very neat, secure screwdriver on here. Very neat, I say, as it just turns in whatever direction you want it to go in. 
it has got a gyro built in it. So if you turn it to the left and press the button down, it unscrews. You turn it to the right and press the same button down and it screws in. Very neat. Now when it comes to fitting that ESC in, if I just take a little bit of the edge off this, this servo on here, it will squeeze in lengthways like that. However, there is the issue. This is a sensor motor and the sensor cable needs to go in at the end. So I'm gonna need some clearance on there. So I'm gonna have to mount the ESC sideways like this, which means we're leaving a little bit of this plastic. Well, in order to aid with fitting it, I've used my Dremel, cut a little section out from here. And I've also on the central spine, wasted a little bit of the plastic off here. However, this bit in the center, here, extreme cross bracing on it. This is obviously now a structural part of the car. On the 144001, this wasn't. This could flex very easily. Now, this seems like an integral part of the car. But on the basis that somebody's designed that strength in, I'm not going to want to take it out by leaving that off the car completely, as I've done in the past. So, and that's another reason why on this occasion, we're not going to be fitting the Mod 1 gear in. Next, I have screwed the central spine back down in place. The reason for that is then I can see exactly how much clearance I've got to fit my ESC in. As there would be no point in putting this in first and then finding I couldn't screw this down in place because it was in too far. Well next, time to fit those two new aluminum steering knuckles and using my power tools. This should be a fairly swift job to do indeed. I'm going to use the power tools, the steering knuckles put on in under two minutes. Well now at this point in the original video, the motor was in, the wiring was done, I was just about to say it's all ready to go. But when I put the body on, the motor leads were pushing up a little bit too much. The body would sit on, but wasn't quite happy with it. I didn't want it to be super flush on there. So I thought, well, I'll bring the motor leads around the back of the car. At which point I realised my error, I'd actually soldered the motor leads on coming out that way. Whereas on the other version of this car, I'd soldered them this way, brought them around the back of the car. And at that point, I thought, well, hang on, Rich, they're going to foul on the pinion gear. Because yours truly, I'd left the gear cover off when I swapped out the Mod 1 gearing from uprated steel spur gear. So I had to take the back of the car apart again in order to fit this cover on so I can route the cables around the back and get the body on nice and flush. Anybody that thinks this stuff's easy, thank you again. Centre lead back in, motor screwed down, gear cover back on so the leads can flop around the back. Central spine back on, okay, nearly all set in terms of the electrics going in there. Tidied all the wiring back up as I originally had it. So we should be good to go. Moment of truth is the body gonna fit on with a reasonable effective finish on there. A little bit of flaring at the back, but not too much on the side on there. It raises a little bit up out on there. It's pushed mainly by the wiring at the back, but as you see from the top, the body is not gonna fit too badly at all. Time to lower the car with the all important droop screws and find some way of mounting that rear wing as a front wing. And if anybody's wondering what I'm talking about by droop screws, you will see a little hole down here. There is one either side on the suspension that marries up with this little metal tab here, the same on this side. And most importantly at the front, we have these two tabs here, which correspond to these two holes on either side. So what I'm gonna do is put the M3 by 10 screws through here. That will then lower the front of the car like that. And you can adjust that front height by adjusting the two screws. So the car looks like this from the side right now. And with the two droop screws in place at the front, you can now see a completely different attitude on the front of the car, which is gonna help with the aero because the, the wind, instead of lifting the car from underneath, is now gonna be pushing down on top of the body, keeping that front end down as the speed builds up. That could become all important. And you can do exactly the same as at the rear. But in this first instance, I'm gonna leave it exactly as it is, front lower than the rear. But you can drop the whole car down simply by putting two screws in the rear as well. And at this point, I would also shout out to the RC Master who pointed out the more perpendicular these are, the more like level they are, the more power they're gonna to transmit to the car. If they're down at a hard angle, you're gonna be getting more friction on there, which is not gonna help the car's top. Now at this point, you're also gonna to need to adjust these two front tie rods to adjust the camber of the car, because as you've lowered it down, the wheels are gonna be tilting in. So we want them bringing back up level on there. Hope that makes sense. Now I've also put a little bit of toe in on the car, but that is something that's a personal preference and also something you may need to play around with when you're out in the field. Well, I've just got a 2S pack in here just to test fire it up on a bent. I've got the Castle B-Link connected in there to set everything up how I want it, to increase the braking, increasing the timing makes to the motor. Because obviously in terms of speed runs, fast, the more revs the motor's got, the faster we're gonna be going, but the warmer it's gonna get. Okay, well, nearly ready to go. Powered it up, we've got just the 2S pack in a minute to test fire it up on a bench. I've just been setting everything up using the Castle B-Link, but I'm gonna disconnect that in a second, but I've just done it to adjust things like the braking. The one good thing, 
where I might test this out in the field is the, the Mamba X has got the cheat mode, which it enables you to give the motor more timing at a, above a certain amount of revs, like a turbo boost, if you like. Could be good for pushing that top end speed right up. But obviously when you do that, the motor is going to get warmer. Anyway, what's it like on 2S? Not bad. Well, I couldn't resist playing around with that cheap function on a bench. And with, it, the, 10 and with the timing increased by 10%, we've certainly got more power at the top end, or certainly more revs. Might not come off well on a video, but in person, that is definitely running at high revs. But that can, still cool to the touch. Barely even lukewarm. Well, following that bench test on 2S, the car is now ready to run. I feel confident it should handle quite well at speed. So the very next video you're going to see is this car being speed tested on GPS on 2S and then 3S and we're going to see if Project 120 will live up to its name or not. I will say I fired it up on a bench on 3S and that was the end result that happened to one of the foams. So with the amount of power it's got the slightest defect in anything is going to be picked up. I suspect there was a little crack in that tyre before on there, but something like hit me in the face in comedy style, and it was that bit of the tyre blowing off. But the thing promises to be monstrously fast. Will it live up to name a Project 120? Watch out for the next video and see. Well, thumbs up if you like this video, guys. Post any comments you might have in the comment section below the video, and hit the circle below to subscribe. And if you do hit the circle, don't forget to hit the bell.